centuries ago, our forefathers left Earth in search of a new paradise. With them, they took the ecosystem of our world, chosen on board the giant arcs. Artificial intelligence guided our ships through the void, while the pioneers slept and dreamt of a new beginning. Scarabex took control of our system, building huge war machines to enforce its rule. Orbital habitats were destroyed. Populations wiped out. Millions died. We are all going to die. Unless you go back in time and play some old FMV games, particularly action games with all the 90 cringe you can or cannot handle. These games were really something different. With the advent of CD-ROM drives, game developers had very interesting ideas on how to make the best of the astonishing disk space the new medium provided. So let's dive into the most interesting or most notorious games of that era. Didn't have any problems. Beggar's Canyon isn't half as tough as the runs we used to do. Good luck. Thanks. Green leader to rookie one. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Good. We're approaching the canyon run. Begin with basic flight maneuvers. Stay tight, follow our lead, and stay clear of the walls. Star Wars Rebel Assault was the game that laid the foundation for many of the FMV action games. Released in 1993, it featured a wild mix of live action from the movies, pre-rendered scenes and hand-animated sprites. Due to compression and CD-ROM drive speed limitations, the image quality was very poor, but it was nonetheless an impressive achievement of its time. The game captured the Star Wars feeling like no other before it. The innovative mix of third-person and first-person perspectives with varying gameplay styles boasted a lot more variety than your run-of-the-mill rail shooter. Gameplay-wise, it definitely had its fair amount of shortcomings, but I was just blown away by its photorealistic graphics, at least that's what I thought of them back then. My main complaint about the game is its difficulty. Maybe I'm just too old and lack the reflexes, but I had a very hard time replaying it even on a lower difficulty setting. It's also very hard to read the game and discern when you're hitting something in the FMV background. Great! Looks like we're clear. Yeah, I'm plotting a course for the rendezvous point. Hmm, scanners are picking up something strange. I can't get a firm fix on anything. The sequel, Rebel Assault 2 The Hidden Empire, is a huge improvement in any way. The animated sprites have been replaced with actual actors and the resolution and video compression also improved greatly. Generally, you feel the up production value throughout, which comes at no surprise as the sequel is delivered on two CD-ROMs, whereas the original only had one. The gameplay is a big step up. It boasts even more variety and this time around you get a much better feeling of what you're actually doing and the difficulty seems a lot more balanced. Whereas I gave up on the first game at some frustrating level, I still remember that I played through the second game and even tried the higher difficulty settings. The game also came out for the PlayStation where it featured 3D objects instead of sprites. It makes for a great title for my Ember Nick, allowing me to carry a piece of the Star Wars universe in my pockets. Alex, those are organics. Have you scanned for any form of life? No point, Captain. The asteroid is obviously alive. Are you sure? Certain. Should I attempt evasive action? Activating emergency procedures. Jesus, Alex, talk to me. Warning. Drive system overload. Detonation imminent. Captain, please commence manual shutdown of drive systems. Launching automatic distress beacon. Now I'm not going through these games chronologically, so let's talk about Creature Shock. <sighs> I really fell for this one. 
After seeing this in the German gaming magazine PC Games with an impressive rating of 90% I had to buy it. I mean, how could I resist these outerworldly alien tentacle monsters? The design was just right up my alley and I really wanted to love the game, but it's not making it easy. Lacking the Star Wars atmosphere or any kind of live action cheese, you have to put up with some very repetitive and uninspired shooting passages and trial and error gameplay. I still kind of like the alien designs and admittedly I also still remember the big boob damsel in distress, but overall the entertainment value is lower than I hoped for after all these years. It somehow succeeded in making a 90s Lovecraftian space horror FMV fest boring and well that's quite an achievement. What do you think is my favorite of these games? Did you guess Cyclemania? Probably not, but it's true. This full motion video offbeat road rash clone is really a lot of fun and easy to get into. Yes, it doesn't feature a story of any kind, but at least it has some very weird cutscenes and design choices to make up for that. It's a simple racing game that needs about 5 minutes to get used to. After that it's surprisingly playable and even though it's mostly about avoiding oncoming traffic, the sense of speed and the novelty of racing on actual roads make it quite addicting. You have a variety of modes and tracks to choose from, especially considering that the game came on a single CD-ROM. The image quality is not great and the sprites sometimes struggle with scaling and perspective, but overall it was still impressive back then. Well, at least because I played this before I got my hands on the first Need for Speed game that came out the same year. Yeah, in hindsight those FMV graphics might not have been so impressive after all. And yes, car handling of Need for Speed was way more elaborate than the bikes in Cyclemania, but it's just one of those cases where simplicity and flow just works very well together. It's a great arcade game that I can recommend playing for a few minutes at a time. Having a good time? Click that subscribe button for more joy in the future. Maybe even the future where our next game takes place. This mission is of utmost importance, Scavenger 4. Failure means the destruction of civilization. Good luck. Pew pew pew! Nova Storm in a nutshell. A really nifty rail shmup from the legendary developer Psygnosis. You're flying through pre-rendered backgrounds trying to avoid obstacles and shoot the baddies. The stages are on the shorter side, but the game makes that up with a large variety of bosses. It's a bit trial and error to learn their patterns, but at least you get a targeting window that shows you the boss's weak spots. There are also power-ups that you can collect to fill up your upgrade meter. You can then choose to activate the current upgrade at any time, but the farther the meter is filled up, the more powerful the upgrades get. I'm still a big fan of the ship's design. What a sleek little fighter. I wouldn't mind flying that thing in Star Citizen. And fitting the retro future aesthetic is the intense amount of chrome and reflections, typical for the 90s CGI. The game also features several cutscenes with live actors. Unfortunately there's a big black border around the videos on the PC version, but that doesn't take away from the hilarious performances. And speaking of hilarity, I have to show you the secret tomato level. <laughs> viewers out there waiting to see you in action. So get in gear, baby. Choose a car. From now on, you are on your own, Forza. And as I always say at this point in the show, have a nice day, baby. Last but not least, we get to my favorite game. Game? Um, I mean TV show. Mega Race. You don't play that game for its serviceable but lackluster driving mechanics, you play it because of Lance Boyle, the over-the-top show host portrayed by the captivating Christian Eriksen. 
You are the star of a virtual racing show in a distant dystopian future where you have to race several street gangs or kill their leaders. Virtually, that is of course. As the game doesn't have to abide the laws of physics, it goes wild with its track designs and arcade vehicle combat gameplay. But the best part, hands down, are the many cutscenes from the show that you can unlock depending on your performance. The sleazy show host eagerly comments on each of your failings or cheers you on when you engage in a street rage rampage. Virtually, that is of course. Even though some of its humor hasn't aged that well, it still cracks me up. I can't help myself, I might still need some growing up to do. There's been two sequels, an okay one and a really bad one, but my nostalgia is definitely on the first of the games. There's allegedly a new game in production called Mega Race Deathmatch, but information is rather scarce and doesn't instill confidence from what I've seen so far. But who knows, maybe 2022 is the year for Lance Boyle to return and offer us the chance of a lifetime. I thank you for the chance to present some of my favorite games from the good old time. I hope you had fun and see ya! All around us are armies of robots making armies of robots making armies. Hey, there's one over there. Hey, you! Get back to work or I'll take out my can opener! <laughs> yeah, those guys just love it when you laugh at them. <laughs> oh, sorry, Enforcer. You didn't get the job done. It's return to reality time, old buddy. Ah, gee, if there was only something I could do. Hey, wait a minute! I've got an idea! <laughs> Let's call the next contestant!